Hi, for those of you who have missed the first part of our program, my name is Rochelle McCarthy. I trained as a registered nurse in South Africa and I also have experience uh, with natural remedies. Everything that we share today is by no means the replacement of sound medical advice and the treatment and care of a trained medical professional. If you'd like to, turn with me in your Bible to Leviticus 7, verse 26 and 27. It says, Moreover, you shall eat no manner of blood, whether it be of fowl or beast, in any of your dwellings. I found it interesting as I was paging through the book of Leviticus that God initially, the first instructions he gives to the Israelites are about salvation, explaining the offering and how sin is paid for. But then God immediately moves into health. And it's quite challenging I think, from an Israelite perspective, imagine yourself there. All of a sudden, God just says, don't eat any blood or fat. But he gives no explanation. It's only in chapter 17 that we find God giving just a brief explanation as to why he doesn't want us to have any blood. Verse uh, Chapter 17 and verse 11, it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Verse 14 puts it beautifully. For it, that is the blood, is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh. For the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth of it shall be cut off. From this short little explanation, we can garner some insight into the working of our bodies. God has said that the life force is contained within the blood. And if you allow me, I would just like to explain a little bit of anatomy and physiology. Very basic, nothing extensive. There's a lot that can be said and maybe if we have enough interest and people are interested, we could do some sub subsequent um, presentations on the matter. But why would God say this? Today we understand the blood and blood vessels to be an intricate transport system, bringing to each cell what it needs and removing waste products. Among all of that we find harmful bacteria, pathogens and other disease causing elements. Isn't it amazing how God's simple instruction in just one sentence helps us to understand how our body works. So what is blood made up of? Mainly two parts. There's the liquid part, which is what we call plasma, and that is about 99% of the total volume. Less than 1% is the other part, which consists of cells or parts of cells. In that, we find red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Um, there's a whole lot of other things as well. So your red blood cells are responsible for carrying oxygen and carbon dioxide to all your cells and to and from the lungs. The white blood cells is the body's defense mechanism. They protect you from any harm causing substances that enter your body, which would be your bacteria, viruses, or any other things. The platelets are responsible for clotting. If you have an injury, a cut, the little tube, the blood vessel in which the blood is, is broken and you'll carry on bleeding unless there was something that God designed in his wisdom to close that gap. So, what about blood vessels? They are, I always like to sort of liken it a little bit to a hose pipe, a garden hose. It's a little tube in which all the blood and plasma and everything that's, that makes up blood is carried. But it's not just a piece of plastic like we have a hose over there. God made a tiny little muscle inside of your blood vessels. And they can contract, which means they become smaller, or dilate, which means they become bigger, in response to inputs they get from the outside environment. If it's too hot, you start to feel a little bit flushed. The skin um, 
pores and everything open up, the blood vessels that's right on the surface of the skin open up and you lose heat or excessive moisture, whatever the body wants to do at that moment. When it's really cold, the blood vessels close up a bit to try and conserve that energy and that heat. And that is exactly why using water is such a simple and effective remedy that you can use at home. So what is hydrotherapy? If we break the word down, basically the hydro part refers to water and therapy is a treatment. It is using water as a means to achieve a desired effect on the body. So what are the properties of water? It is a solvent and it cleans, it's readily available. But there's two interesting facts that I'd like to draw your attention to. Water retains four times as much energy as an equivalent amount of air. Water transfers that same energy 25 times faster than air at the same temperature. So what are the effects of hydrotherapy? Firstly, hot water dilates the blood vessels. We talked about those little pipes or tubes that transports blood. It opens it up. That causes an initial increase in heart rate and then the heart rate drops as the body starts to relax. Cold water constricts or narrows that little tube and there's also an initial increase in the heart rate and then it starts to drop but not because the body relaxes like in hot water it's the body's functions are being depressed or shut down and the body is trying to conserve energy so it constricts the blood flow to the area which it is applied hydrotherapy can bring blood to an afflicted part of the body it can also pull away blood from a deeper organ to the surface where um, the application is made. By applying hydrotherapy to the whole body, it serves to equalize the blood flow. And lastly, specific reflexes for different organs in the body can be targeted with hydrotherapy. And these are based on the sympathetic nervous system. I just need to put in a little disclaimer here. It is not reflexology as we commonly think of. This is just the referred pain that you can experience. Let's take for an example somebody that's about to have a heart attack. Sometimes they will have painful jaws or a painful right arm. That's not the heart, but there's pain in different areas that are linked to the heart. And Hydrotherapy can be used in very much the same way. I'd like to share some of the things you need to keep in mind when doing hydrotherapy. Firstly, temperature. Always begin with a body that is warmed up for best results. Most people today don't dress properly and the body is constantly trying to equalize the energy requirements of the body. When the body is warm, it can be at rest and focus on the healing process. So you would need to warm up the room, cover the person with blankets. An easy way is to put your feet in hot water. Then you need to keep in mind that you can build up your tolerance for the changes in temperature. So start with water that is warm enough for you to tolerate, either as hot as you can tolerate or as cold as you can tolerate. This is important to keep in mind, especially when using it for young children or frail people. The second thing to keep in mind is the duration. The water needs to physically be in contact with the skin to transfer the, either the heat or the cold and the duration of that contact depends on the effect that you want to achieve. To harness the stimulating effect of hot and cold, the best results are seen when given these applications briefly. For today's demonstration, we're going to show a hot application of 3 minutes and a cold application of 30 seconds. 
This is excellent for pain relief or relief for, from congestion. Repetitive cycles of alternating hot and cold treatment is what is necessary to stimulate the body. Doing a set of three or more is usually adequate. Then the body needs to be at rest in order to continue the healing process. Last but not least is hydration. The body uses water for all cell processes and it would stand to reason that when we are stimulating the body to do its own healing, we need to make sure that there is adequate fluids or water on the inside. So, drink warm fluids when you're doing a hydrotherapy treatment. Two to three cups of warm water. You can add a squeeze of lemon juice to make it more palatable or a neutral herb tea. There are also some precautions. Hydrotherapy, although it is generally safe, there are some people that it would be best to avoid this kind of remedies on. People who have had a heart disease, who have kidney disease, those who have had a stroke and diabetics. The problem, especially with diabetics, is a loss of sensation to the feet and to the, to the hands. This means that they won't as easily feel when they're being burnt and this can positively cause harm to them. It's best to avoid doing these treatments on diabetics. There are other things that can be do, done to enhance the blood flow, which we can cover in other videos. In conclusion, God is the ultimate designer of this amazing piece of equipment, the human body. It's impossible for you and me to fully understand everything that happens in our body. But if you and I come to God with a sincere desire for healing, and to come in alignment with his instructions for healthful living, we can expect that he will help us. He will do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for the privilege that we have to use simple and effective remedies that you have put in nature. Please help us to use them wisely and for your glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Hi and welcome to our practical part of the hydrotherapy section. This is just um, to give you an idea of what things you will need to do a hydrotherapy treatment. We will need a blanket, some towels and it's always useful to have heaps on hand. Old towels work good. Some ice some hot water, your lovely herb tea or warm water. It's also useful to have a straw handy. Sometimes when someone is lying down, they're not able to lift up their head and, or get up to drink their herb tea, and it's easier with a straw. Some chucks cloths for a compress, and a range of different sized um, basins. Uh, also have a clock to time yourself but most of us it's easier just to use the timer on your cell phone if you really want for what we're showing today it's not necessary to have a thermometer but the more you gain experience and confidence you might want to actually get a thermometer to measure the temperature of the water or to measure your own temperature when you're doing the remedy Ruth here with Rochelle and our lovely patient Harry. We're just about to do some hydrotherapy, so I'm going to hand it over to Rochelle because she's something very important to say to us. Something that is often neglected is prayer. And whenever we start to do anything for yourself or others, it is always important to pray before you start because we want to acknowledge that God does the healing and we ask his blessing on what we do. So, without further ado, Harry, do you mind if we say a prayer? Let's just pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the privilege that we have of practicing these simple remedies that you've given us to assist our bodies in the healing process. We ask that you would do the healing and that you would be with Harry as we seek to do what is best for his body. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So, as I mentioned before about the equipment, we have it all here. And we're going to start with warming Harry's feet up. So, Harry, can I just get you to lift off your feet? We don't want to burn it. And we'll just pour in some hot water. And just test it with your hand, add some cold or neutral water. So Harry, I'd like you to feel if that's too hot. Always go with your hand as well. Good. Okay. Can it go hotter than that? Or okay. And now we will cover you with a nice blanket. Often, uh, if you have them available, it's preferable to use woolen blankets because they retain the heat much better. Um, if you don't have woolen blankets, a nice thick blanket that can just trap some heat would also work well. Can you just lean forward a little bit? And we're going to do, we're going to do treatment on Harry's arm. So we'll just leave that open. And we'll have a little towel to keep everything dry. There you go. And now in here I have two little cloths that will work as a compress, which we will apply to the area that we want to um, treat. And we have some ice in there. And Ruth is just going to give Harry some warm herb tea to keep the body nice and warm. So throughout the treatment you want to ask if the water is cooling down too much and you keep the feet nice and warm. So. So now we can just add our small towel that we're going to have for the cold application. And these cloths cool fairly quickly. So I'm just going to ask Harry first if this is too hot. Is that foot fine? Okay, and we leave it on just for a couple of seconds and while this is cooling, we can start to ring the next one and apply it. And this is where the timer comes in. Ruth, if you don't mind, uh, we want three minutes on the timer. In this particular treatment, um, for the compress, because we're treating such a small area and the compress itself is fairly thin, we need to change the cloths quite frequently. There are other ways of um, doing these alternate hot and cold treatments where, for instance, you have two buckets of water and in that instance you won't, it's not as intense like this, constantly changing the cloths. Um, you would just put the person's feet or arm or whatever it is in the hot water, have your timer, and then into the cold. Um, but 
we thought we'd give you just a little view of what it is, what we're doing, the effect that you want to see, how to know that the treatment you're doing is effective. It's already starting to become nice and red over here. And maybe later we can take some pictures and just add them into the video. I don't know if they'll be visible. You can already see the red area there. So the other day Michael was having a sore tooth um, and we decided to apply some compresses and that really relieved the pain, relieved the swelling and it was just awesome to see God's healing methods. Is this still warm enough or can it be a little bit hotter? Okay. Okay. And as you can see, the child is not screaming or crying, so you can see quite happy and contented. One of my children has a sore foot or something. They, they like to do this. Put their foot in a bowl of ice and then hot water. And then the other children feel left out. So they also have to do it. And they sit there with their books doing it for a long time. So they, they do quite like it. Yes. Right, three. Yeah. So now we might have a little bit of a shock, right, Harry? I'm going to do the cool part now. Wait, wait for the facial expressions. For 30 seconds, right? Here we go. Cold? Yeah. Okay. You're a tough guy. <laughs> so, just leave that on for 30 seconds. Um, I guess if you're treating a bigger area, the reaction is more pronounced. Harry is not in any pain right now, but I promise you, if you've got someone with an abscess or a boil or something, it will be more pronounced. <laughs> the shock from hot to cold. Okay, we're done. Here we go. And I'll just add some more in there. It's always good to have a good supply of ice and hot water because it always cools down faster than you think. Okay. Good. So as you're doing in every additional cycle of hot, you want to keep the temperature really warm, as warm as they can tolerate it. You'll find as well that the more cycles you do, the higher temperature they can tolerate and the more cold they can tolerate as well. How are we doing for time? We're just coming up one team. Okay. How's your feet, Harry? I'm just going to some more. Do you want to stand some more warm water there? Okay. I need to just lift them up a little bit. I don't want to burn them. How's that? Can you just feel it? Is that good? Okay.
But as you can see, this treatment is rather intense, and I, re I recall a quote where an online says that many people are not keen on natural methods because they take much more work and it takes a little bit longer for nature to do its work. But you know, I just kind of think if God is the author of true healing and he has given us these precious words through the inspiration of spirit of prophecy, and he's gone through all the trouble to send this information to us, then who am I to refuse his instruction? And what love must he not have for me to give such specific instructions and it would be best to heed his um, instructions. So I think we are ready for our next holy cycle. You ready, Harry? Here we go. I'm going to add some ice into my little cloth here. helping someone that might not have a knowledge of God or um, yeah, it's just an opportunity to start sharing and start building that friendship and relationship. Oh good. Yeah. It's looking really nice and red. So this was two cycles. Um, I think for the purpose of this video we don't have to go through it all. Um, and you could see the workings and it takes a bit of effort and you constantly need to add more hot water and check if the person can tolerate the heat, tolerate the cold. And we hope that what we shared today was something that would benefit you and give you the confidence to use Simple, God-given natural remedies at home for yourself and your family. We pray that um, you would go forth and feel empowered and encouraged to do the things that God has given us freedom to do. Hi, this is Healthy Remedies at Home. I'm Ruth Bagri and this is Harrison Bagri, he's going to be our patient. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional, I am just a mum. And these are some of the remedies that I've used, so that's how come I'm going to show you because I know that they work for me. And they've all taken a bit of time and practice, so we're going to start with a, an onion poultice on the ear and Harry has had a very bad very sore ear infection. He was crying, screaming, with extremely sore ears. And he actually said to me, am I going to be like this forever? Because he was in so much pain, he just couldn't see past it. And it happened very suddenly. So we grabbed an onion. Then what did we do? <laughs> we chopped it in half. When you chop an onion, don't chop it that way. Chop it that way, and you can pop it in a pot. And I've just boiled one up, and so I've just I've steamed it. But you can also dry bake it in the oven with um, getting, a, getting an onion and just chopping it in half, and then wrapping it in tin foil and putting it in the oven at 70 degrees for about 20 minutes and then it should just be right. We don't want to burn the patient so we're going to have to do a wee bit of testing until it's ready. So I'm just going to get a few different options here. So we have some chucks cloths. These are quite good because um, you can find with a breaker because you can throw them up and because things that have touched onions generally smell. It's hard to wash it out. 
So you can use one of them or a man's hanky, which are actually quite handy because they're soft and um, comfortable to wear. So I use my tongs and so it's going to get the onions out and I'm just going to pop them here. So the onions are fairly, they're not, not too hot now, but um, I didn't even bother to peel them. Um, they're still quite hot and the best thing to do if they're really hot is you just get the, twi uh, the tongs and you just squeeze it like this. Whoop. And you have to be careful because it likes to all be squeezed out. So maybe just a little bit the other way. Place one here, grab the next one. And the reason onions work so well is because they draw out infection. So you're actually not just relieving the pain, you're also helping with the healing. So whereas painkillers can work for taking, getting rid of the, the pain, but they don't actually help to necessarily heal the body from what its, it's problem is. This onion is falling apart on me. So now I'm just going to put the wash my hands and a few things you need when you do home remedies is glad wrap and my trusty scissors. I'm just going to chop um, this chucks in half because it's kind of big. So Harry's going to pretend to have a sore ears. <laughs> so I just do this. I just um, wrap it up a bit like a parcel and I put a rubber band around it. There we go. That's one ready. And the next one. And so it's already cooled down a wee bit, but it'll be very hot in the inside. So we have to be careful not to burn the patient. Um, so I have a, this is just a this old scarf, which you get from the op shop for a dollar. So it's perfectly usable. And so I'm just gonna get some lab wrap. This is just so that the onion doesn't leak everywhere and be messy. Um, these are actually quite good for when the child is sick. Any any person who has a earache, um, so that they can sleep. So they they're really good at night. Um, so you want it to be comfortable on the ear. So we're not we're not covering this part with glad wrap, just the back just so that it um, doesn't leak on everything. Now as for the, the trickiest bit of all, which I'm hoping not to make too many bloopers, um, so I'm just gonna tie it kind of ready, and I'm gonna try to make Harrison not look too silly, because he's been so good letting me do this to him. So pop that over. So just try and get it A little bit, the a bit of tightness, and now I'm just gonna check. Bring the inside of your hand is um, is the good place to test the temperature, and I'm just gonna pop this here, right on his. Oh, I missed one point. Sorry. This here, not that I got much out, but a tiny bit of onion juice. So I'm just going to pop it, it's not hot now, I'm just going to pop this in Harrison's ear. So I'm just going to, just put it in one ear just to give you an idea. So you're going to have to lean on your side, Harry. Okay, it's just a few drops. Doesn't hurt, doesn't sting. And when you do it when it's quite warm, it actually feels really lovely. And we'll just sort of wriggle it in. You have to use a little bit more. 
go over it, they'll wriggle. Here we go. Um, here we go. I'm going to pop this on here. Oops. This is not going to work so well for the camera, but we'll try. All right, you hold that with your hand. And a, a big, big old woolen hat works quite well too sometimes. So whatever you can find, certainly don't need to use a scarf, just whatever's available and comfortable. And put the other hand on here. Right. So that just feels incredibly soothing if you have got um, sore ears. It's just, I've done it myself. It's just absolutely wonderful. It's instant relief. And so you can keep that on for however long you want. Um, you can also pop those onions back in to heat up again. So you can reuse them. Basically, it's just a hot compress, but the onions draw out infection. Um, so you, you might want to redo it with a new onion later on, so you can put some more onion juice in if you have a really bad problem. Um, so you can sleep with it, and then just, what I do is put a bowl, a metal bowl by the bed, so if the child just gets sick of it in the night and they want to get rid of it, they just pop it in the bowl so it's not going on the bedding. And I just put like a towel on the pillowcase so then they can have it leaking. But it's not too bad, but yeah, the room might smell of onion, but that's really good as well because it's very cleansing. So if a child is sick and you can't do this, you can just chop the onion again like this and you don't have to peel it, just pop it on a plate and put it as close to their bed as possible so that it draws infection and you can have that in any room of the house but it's especially good right where they're sleeping. How's that feeling? He's smiling, he's not crying so that's good. Does it feel nice? Right, we'll move along to making a cough syrup. So we have our onions already chopped here. So we will show you how to, I thought I'd, I'd chop them first because I was a, just be a mess on the video, crying. So we're just gonna pop this into a jar. Just have a look and see how simple it is, you'll be amazed. So we have our honey, and we have our jar, and we have our honey spoon. So we're just going to pop it all in. So this is freshly chopped. And then we're just gonna, this honey's really lovely. It's a local honey from Oxford. And I think I've chosen the, the slowest way to put it in the jar. So I'm just going to actually pour it. So put a bit in. So if you have any coughing children and you don't want to give them some of the nasty cough liquids that are around, um, you want to give them something a bit natural and you're not into sugar. Then you just do this and you pour some more honey on it. This will make a, a good amount of um, cough syrup. You don't just have to have a cough to, in order to have it. So um, if you have a sore throat, it also works quite well. So a little bit more. It really does work fine even if you don't do it exactly how I'm doing it right now. And you just leave this like this for um, even half an hour you'll see it will go really liquidy so it won't be the thick honey and then when it's all drained it will, um, when you, you just get a spoon 
and it will because it will be like liquid and then you can just drain it off so then you just keep all of the, the onion pieces aside and just use the liquid so you can use um, three teaspoons a day throughout the day for an adult um, or just half a teaspoon three times a day for a child so I hope you like that remedy so we'll have a look at that later the next thing we have is um, if a child has or an adult has a nasty cough and it feels very heavy and tight on the chest um, this is another thing we have done in our family um, we make a compress on the chest so this here is an Enyo bag which you can get smaller um, washing laundry bags um, but this works pretty well because it's soft and you won't have onions floating around everywhere so um, also you can wrap it up in a hanky or a, um, one of these but because um, the chest is quite large you want to sort of put a good amount on so um, this is what I do so I'm just going to pop all the onions in the bag and I'm going to seal it up so that I don't lose onions and then we just when the patient is lying down obviously so I won't do a lying down one but when the first child or an adult is lying down you can just lay it on them and then you use glad wrap over top to um, hold it all together but something I do is I'll also with my castor oil packs I also use um, where is it gone? this here it's, I couldn't find a new one to show you so sorry it's a bit of an, an old bag but you just chop sister um, snap lock bag but this is the small box where you want the big box so just chop it there chop it there and down here and then it's just a big sheet so it has a, a better coverage area um, so you just cut it for the size you want but you can just imagine this is the child's chest so you'd want that to be there so it's not uncomfortable so the, really the smaller the, the onion is chopped the nicer and more comfortable it is to wear because it's not the nicest so then you place your plastic on top like that and then you would use the glad wrap over top so that it holds it this sort of clings to the skin better whereas this doesn't really stick to the skin and then you could wear a um, for a, a woman you could wear a sports bra that sort of holds it it in place or an old t-shirt um, preferably tight fitting clothing works best so that it doesn't move around and it'll help to draw out the infection in the lungs and relieve some of the congestion and just help you to heal so it's a really good um, remedy for that one so I think we might move on to something else now so we will see you in a while Hi, welcome back to Healthy Remedies at Home. We have Harry here ready to do another session. So we have made the onion syrup. Um, just a reminder um, that you need to drain it and it's gone very liquidy now. And um, it actually lasts for a long time and I hate to tell you exactly how long I've had some in the fridge before and it's still um, really great because of course honey has such wonderful properties. Um, so you just drain it, pop your lid on, so there's no onion pieces in it, and you just pop it in the fridge so it's all good to go for whenever you need it. Um, so Harris is going to give us a wee demo on some facial expressions of having some. See, see if he likes it. Is it good? Yeah? Truly? Yeah, tastes pretty good. So I'll drain that later and pop it in the fridge. Now we are going to um, pretend that Harry's got a very nasty cough and a cold and um, of course we've done the, the onion before in his chest 
pretend, but we're going to now use his feet because the feet are a reflex for the chest and the head and the abdomen. So it's quite good. You can use them for um, use the use the feet for a carrier for these onions. So we've got some bread bags, which you get from supermarket veggie bags. Don't throw them out because they are great for this um, little half remedy. So a bit noisy, hope it's not too bad. So I'm just gonna pop some onions in a bag. Probably chop them up a bit fine and work better, but that's okay. So um, I'm just going to use Harry's foot it's probably pretty dirty because it's been running around outside. So I'm just going to pop his foot in there. This is for any age, obviously. And the onions are just the fumes that are just going to be going into the feet, the soles of the feet. So what I would do, um, if he was going to be, I would, this is a great time to use it. Of course, you can use it in any time. I would just put one of my husband's um, woolen socks because they're quite large and easily slide over and keep it all contained so that um, we don't lose bits of onion in the bed at night. Um, but yeah, it works really well. So that's one little tip that you can do. But also, for babies especially, you can use garlic and you just need to chop it up a wee bit. Now, garlic is a little bit different in the way that it, it can actually burn the skin. So the best way is to use a bit of cloth. So instead of just putting it straight on the skin like you would put onion. So i am just peeled it, cut the little bits it out. Um, there we go. It's also good for any um, infections at the foot as well that you're wanting to heal. Um, so just chop it up. Chop it up nice and fine. I'm not doing it in any particular way, just, just a rough job. And so then I'm going to use the uh, chucks. So I've already cut some to size. And of course, use um, a old hanky, which is quite good, nice and soft. But I'm just going to place the garlic on the chucks, and then I'm going to use some glad wrap, which I've already got organised here. And pop it on like this. I'm just sort of going to flatten it out and then just sort of wrap it like a little parcel yet again. And then I'm just going to turn it over so it's just the one side with thickness here. And then I'm going to get Harry's foot. Different foot this time. Yep, it's pretty dirty. Okay, so I'm just going to pop it on like that on the sole of his foot. And then I'm going to just wrap it up, not too tight obviously, but just so that it doesn't come off in the night or during the day when he's running around with his shoes and socks on. And then just pop his sock on and it actually would be quite comfortable because it's, it's not too thick and not too hard. And so that's an easy garlic poultice on the feet and it's great for babies. There we go. Now, we are going to do a ginger poultice. Hi, welcome back to Healthy Remedies at Home. I'm Ruth Bagri with Harry here again. We're just going to use our wonderful herb, natural treatment, ginger. So, this one is a wonderful anti-inflammatory. So it's really good for any type of um, pain like menstrual cramps, sprained wrists, um, 
yeah, sore joint, sore back, many, many things. So um, we're going to grate it with a grater, but you know what? I've already done it. So we have some here already done. So we're just going to simply show you how to do an easy compress. So we have, I've just made a little layer of glad wrap so that it's nice and waterproof. So before we do that, we're just going to quickly make a castor oil one and while that's in the oven, we'll continue on with this one. So um, this is castor oil and I get it from Pure Nature and we love this one. So I've just got an oven proof dish and a man's hanky and I'm just going to pop it in here. I'm just going to Probably about enough. So I'm just going to let that soak in. Okay. So I normally put it in the oven at 70 degrees for about 20 minutes. So I'm just going to let that all soak in nicely. Right. Okay. So while that's going, we can do the next part. So I've using chucks cloths again. Um, but honestly, any any old rags, pillowcases, this is an old nappy that my kids have used. Um, these are great because the material is so lovely and soft and thick. Right, so we have chucks cloth here again. Um, you can put um, ginger straight on the skin. So I'm just going to just layer it like this because it will be a bit goopy. So I'm just going to pop it on like this. Now, um, a word of caution. You will think you are having a terrible, terrible reaction or burn with this. It's like deep heat. And I have thought that when I had it on, I thought, no way, this is going to be this is going to be making me have a rash, or like I'm going to have a third degree burn, but it, it was fine. There was nothing wrong with my skin. I checked, even though I've been told it's fine, um, but it's it's like deep heat, so it really heats up. I've just done this. I'm going to take off his shirt, sweetheart. I've already asked him. He's consented to this. Um, so, yeah, it's going to get really hot but that's just your body working with the ginger. So I've done this, and so we've got um, an old crepe bandage. I um, have used, just reused crepe bandages, just wash them, so this isn't going on any wound as such, so it's fine. Um, so I'm just gonna pretend he's been on the trampoline today, and he's sprained both of his, um, his wrists. And they're very sore, so this here is great for inflammation. So now I'm just going to pop it on so we can. Is it sore there? <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to go like this. You don't want to do it too tight, that um, it will cut circulation, obviously. And so you can still move your hand a little bit. Yeah, and we're just going to. Catch this. Can you tell? Is it, is, it, is it feeling warm? Yeah? So obviously with a child you'd have to just listen to them and just tell them that it, it is going to get very, very hot, but it will not cause any problems. And if they want, you can take it off and just show them that it's not burning the skin because um, you want them to feel comfortable with it. So here we have... Uh, on your wrist, pop it here, and I'll just get some scissors. And I bet you they're going to be blunt. Yeah, I was meant to get my other ones. Huh. Is it nice and warm? So, no need to buy deep heat and all the other things that are good for inflammation when you can make it yourself. And it'll actually help as well, so that's a good thing. 
So you can leave that on overnight, but obviously it'll come up and down with heat and um, just to whatever's comfortable. Okay, so let that rest because it's pretty sore and jumping on the trampoline. Now we're going to do a potato. And people think, what? Potatoes? They can be good for you. For that, raw? Yes, they can. So um, if you have a cut, so potatoes are good for any skin irritation, like rash, um, cuts, grazes, splinters, um, they're, they're just amazing. And it also helps to draw out infection. So um, it's really good if you have a splinter and you're trying to get it out. Put some grated potato, which I have here. And it's gone a little bit brown because it's taken me a little bit longer to do this filming. But as you can see underneath, it's nice and a bit whiter. So it takes, it has a lot of juice in it. So we don't necessarily want all that juice um, in the poultice. So yeah, potatoes are great. So if you're going to use it, if you have an open wound, you might want to make sure potatoes are very, very clean. Maybe even take the skin off if it is what you want, what you feel comfortable with. But I'm fine. It's not, not an open wound or anything. There's no infection. We're just going to place that on. So I'm going to show another simple way of using a bag because these are a lot more durable and um, so if you were doing a large area, you'd probably want to use one of these. So I just, to make it comfy, let's chop that bit off here. And these I also use for when we do the castor oil packs especially if you're doing it for a large part of the body, which is used in conjunction with um, lab wrap. So we have this, but we probably won't be using all of that, but we'll just halve it like that. So we have some more lab wrap, which we will use to help it to stick to the body. Lab wrap sticks better than the plastic. So, as organised as you are, it will definitely help so that you don't have mess and children crying and all that sort of thing. So now we have the ginger and we're just going to have um, I must have dropped my piece of material. I'll just grab another one. So potato doesn't do any injury to the skin. So I don't have to put a layer between. So I'm going to just use the nice stuff at the bottom. I'm just going to drain it a little bit so it's not too, too wet. And this feels lovely and soothing as well. It doesn't sting. So it's good when children get to understand natural remedies. They don't have to worry about it stinging because sometimes things hurt when you put them on cuts so it's not so pleasant. So we're just going to pretend we have another another cut on this wrist, a uh, uh, sprained wrist but you could also have a graze. So we're going to put that on, slide it down a little bit more and then I'll use this if I can do this. And I'll put this more on the hand then it's going to stick to the skin better. There we go. I've really done it very tight. But just to give you the picture. And of course, kids like having bandages on because it shows that they've been, shows, shows that they've had an injury and that people love and care for them to, to help them to feel better. You can leave this on overnight as well, or just however whatever's comfortable. But I, I wouldn't go um, leaving it on 
too, too long because you don't want to cause irritation to the skin. So if you want to alternate, you can do, um, if it's a really bad sprain, you can do ginger or overnight, and then you could do potato for the next day, or you can, you can alternate, which is quite good because they both have healing properties and they both help with sprains and injuries all kinds of different ones so it just depends what you have in the pantry in the cupboard so um, both are great so we'll move on to something else in a minute see ya Harry here has just had to take his ginger poultice off because it was getting rather hot so it's done what it's needed to do it helps to cut down that inflammation so now how's this poultice of the potato doing Harry is it all right doesn't feel uncomfortable no so that one is for tissue um, problems so like swelling and so like the fingers toes knees elbows all those things are potato is really good for I mean of course the ginger is as well but um, you can just use it if you've got a sore finger sp sprain or whatever you can use it to wrap around your finger as well potato right now we're going to continue on with our um, castor oil so we've just taken this one out of the oven and it's not too bad I better Put it on here. All right. So we're going to lay out some of the things we're going to need. So we've got our bag. Um, I particularly like these bags when you cut it and open it up to its full size because these are good for adults. Obviously, we're doing it on Harry. He's an inch child. So if you're going to um, put it on, it's the bigger the area, the bigger the um, the result, the better the result. So here we have your heart and your lungs and your liver and your stomach and then we have, if he was a female, he would have um, ovaries and uterus and um, the reasons people use, in my research, people have used castor oil for um, helping with breast lumps, um, cysts and cancers and um, fibroids, um, constipation, many reasons and obviously remember I'm not a doctor or a health profession I've just learned from experience and have used this and found it amazing so that's why we do it. So we're going to pretend that um, Harry's got some pain here, I'm not going to touch him because my hands are a bit cold, um, so he's got some inflammation, you know, some pain here and we don't know what it is, it could could be many different things, so um, we'll just put the castor oil on and generally it relieves the pain pretty quickly because it's warm and castor oil is one of the deepest penetrating oil that you can get. And so you can put some essential oils, I've got peppermint which is great for cramps and um, pain as well, um, and then we have clove which is great for um, pain and obviously many people use it in their mouth for um, tooth pain and then we have oregano which is also very good for um, pain but as well as um, helping with any gut issues um, but they, they all have many properties which can be of an advantage used in a hot compress so we have this now um, normally I would use um, a big compress to put on the body for a, an adult. So I've just got an old um, pillowcase. Don't go using your good ones because it'll never come right again, pretty much. So what you can do is you just fold it to the size that you want. So I'm just going to fold this one to a, a bit smaller. So. The reason you would use um, this doubled over is because obviously the pillowcase is already doubled, so now it's going to be quadrupled. So it just means that you have more saturation of the castor oil, so therefore it's 
will have more oil in it to to help the body. So you would just get it nicely laid out and then you would put the oil on. It is best to just have it on a tray and just to lay it on like this and leave it for a wee while to just absorb in. So then you kind of have an idea of whether you need more or less. So the way I did it before was just a cheat's way. But um, if you want to do it properly and you have the time, and do it like that. And so you could, um, I, I put it in a dish in the oven and I keep it in that dish all the time. I just have a, a small dish and just have it like this. And I just, whenever I'm wanting to use the compact um, compress, I just pull it out of the, the bag, which I have it in and just chuck it in the oven and I've got a little mini oven which has 70 degrees so I know exactly the temperature and the time and then it buzzes when it's ready and then I just pull it out and I'll use tongs and then I'll just lay it on my plastic sheet like this and it's sometimes easier to have someone help you but um, you can do it yourself and then I wait for it to be of a good temperature and whoever you're putting it on is a good idea just to let them feel the temperature because you don't want to burn them or them to feel anxiety about it um, so then you would just put it on the, you want to be working it fairly quickly because it, obviously it will cool fast and it's nicer and it's warm so then you just pop it on like this and it would and then you would use the glad wrap to go over the top so if you're lying down with um, a plastic sheet or an old rubbish bag with a towel or um, sheet over the top so that it's not um, cold and uncomfortable and you won't have to worry about your sheets getting oil on them. And then um, you use glad wrap to fasten it around the back further than, you know, you can cross over. Um, so that's what I would do for a bigger comp compress. So it's that there, but we're just going to use a small one. So this one here is pretty good. So another way to use one is to get a jar like this, which I will show you in a minute. Um, so if this was folded nicely, you could just have it like this and just pop it in the jar and when it's cool, put the lid on. And I just use my tongs somewhere so I, I do this I go like this so um, I pop it in the oven don't need the tongs obviously then so I pop it in the oven and then when I'm ready to take it out it'll be really hot because the jar because it's heated in the jar and um, saves dishes and then I just get the jar and put it on a, on a hot uh, heat proof thing and I just pull it out like this and I would just lay it on the plastic and then then I would put it on the patient. So we're just going to fold it to the shape that I want like this and it'll still be nice and warm to smooth it out so the more smoother it is the more comfy it'll be. Yay. Okay so um, and then I would have my essential oils. I'm going to use a bit of clove. It's quite strong. But you just choose the oils that you would prefer to use. You could use lavender if you're wanting to um, help you to sleep. Just like that. Like that. And get your glad wrap laid out. No, I tend to be quite generous on my glad wrap. Obviously, it might be fiddly the first time that you do this, but after after you've done it a few times, you'll be a pro. And just like that. But I could just do it. Just make it smaller and just like this. Okay. 
Right, now it's to put it on the patient. And I hope you won't scream. So obviously easy if someone else is helping you or you've got the patient lying down, which is always easier. So it's not too hot. It's cold. It's cold now. <laughs> but you can still use it cold. You don't actually always have to heat it. But it is a much easier way for it to help the body if it's, if it's hot. <laughs> okay, arms up. <laughs> you need to put your arms up because I can't hold it on. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, my hands are a bit cold too. Sorry, sweetheart. nice and warm it would just feel it would just be lovely so you can use your old um, crepe bandages that you've been collecting so just to help fasten it on obviously sports bras are much easier to hold them but you just put the the pack just where you have the, the the pain so if it's to the side or wherever and um, people have had the, the most effect for breast cancer and tumors and fibroids and things like that if they do it for more than five hours and do that say five days a week possibly so like many things the more you um, do it the, the better it is but um, can you still breathe? Not too tired? No? So it's kind of a long bandage, so I'm just going to go over the top. So that's, um, it's quite awkward to put it on the body. So depending on your shape, if it might try to slide down or come up or whatever. So you put your arms down, you can relax now. <laughs> um, so you, you generally find some clothing that will help to hold it nicely. So how does that feel? Okay. Yeah, so hopefully you can have a go at making some of these. Um, I'll just read you a list of some things that it's good for. So breaking up breast lumps, bumps, congestion, adhesions, and um, it helps to break up tumours and it's great for the breath, uh, lumps in the breast and um, yeah, great for constipation and also for diarrhea. Um, so it's really good on babies. When you've got an upset baby, you can put a nice warm, warm pack on them and it really helps. So I hope you have a go at making this one. So yeah. Welcome back to Healthy Remedies at Home. I'm here with Rochelle and she's going to show us how to use some charcoal. So charcoal is basically wood that has been charred and gone through a special pro uh, process to make the carbon molecules active. And what carbon does is it absorbs toxins. It is amazing. I don't have effects with me right now. We can make them available as well, or there's heaps of material you can check online about the facts of how much toxins um, charcoal can absorb. So you can get this from iHerb um, or Autumn Leaves is close by as well. These are the tablet forms. Um, they're excellent if you're having a bit of digestive issues. It's quite easy to take the capsules. But for today, what we're going to show you, we'll be using the powder. And we will also be using linseed. It doesn't have to be any special kind of linseed, but it does need to be ground up because uh, we want that gelling effect that linseed does. Linseed is a potent anti-inflammatory. It's full of omega-3s. And that will be really soothing when you apply this poultice. 
Um, you could also use Slippery Elm. It also gels and soothes. You could use psyllium husks. I once had my wisdom teeth extracted and it was really painful and the medication, the pain medication was negatively impacting me and I remembered about charcoal and what I had on hand was some stiff cold oats and I literally took the charcoal powder, mixed it in, put a poultice on and I was sleeping like a baby that night. So uh, when you work with charcoal the only thing you need to really be careful is when you open it very slowly. Very slowly. You don't want to shake the jar because it's a powder and it can spread everywhere and mess. It stains your clothes. So we have some gloves and you want to maybe wear an apron if you um, want to be extra careful. So we will be using, oh, and you need boiling water and some cling wrap for the poultice itself. We will be using about two tablespoons of linseed and I'll just put on my gloves. These ones do come with a wee scoop so they're nice and handy. Yes. About a teaspoon of charcoal powder. So that will probably be about two of these. There we go. And so we're mixing it, and this is where you don't want to do this too vigorously. You just get all the charcoal mixed in with the linseeds. And you just add little bits of hot water to get the consistency you want kind of makes it more like a dough so you can flatten it uh, to mold whatever you're wanting. Yes. The longer you let the linseed sit, the more water it absorbs. So here we have a very doughy, pasty kind of mixture. Um, you could add more water to this, but which I think I'll do a little bit. Just like that. So in New Zealand we don't have snakes, so that's a good thing, but these are a great um, poultice to put on snake bites, um, bee stings, um, if you have any infections or is, um, something in your skin like a splinter or, and it's formed a, an infection, this is great to help draw it out. So it's, it's very comfortable and um, it doesn't hurt. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of cling wrap and this will just form the back of your poultice as you apply it to whatever area of the skin. You can make these as large or as small as you need them to be. I've used poultices that spread over the whole abdomen and it's best to use an old um, cloth something, um, that, an old sheet that you don't mind discarding because once you've used it on a piece of cloth, it stains, it's gone, just throw it away. So this is the area that we'll be using and we'll just spread our mixture over here. You want to leave a bit of a border when you're making the poultice because it can spread and you don't want that to ooze out and stain your clothes or leak, basically. So you can also um, put this in a Ziploc bag and you just squish it down like a small Ziploc bag, squish it down and then you pop it in the freezer or you can cut it up once it's set and have it in the freezer so whenever you want a simple remedy and it's nice and cool but then you pop it on and it starts to melt so it, it does last a while as well. That's excellent. So it's a, it's, you don't have to throw it away once you're finished with it for all this here. There you go. So I've just folded the other half across and now 
we are ready to apply it. Oh, actually, because this part has been in contact with the mixture, it's closer and it's warmer. If you've added a bit more water, it'll be more moist. And you can just apply it to the area and secure it with a bandage. And that is as simple as it is. And it feels lovely. There we go. Hey, welcome back to Healthy Remedies at Home. Hey, Harry. Um, so in our family, we make our own gut powder. Kids have named it Mama's Gut Powder. Um, it's really simple and quick to make, so I thought we're nearly out of it, so I could show you how to make some more. Okay, so I just take a bowl. And I have some psyllium husks and some slippery elm. These are all great things for the gut. And some turmeric, which is also very good for the gut and good for pain relief and many, many things. So this is just a way of helping your gut to um, be healthy and to be able to digest your food nicely and um, just to keep you in good health. So. I've got some, I don't really have a, necessarily a, I normally just chuck in, but I have to try and have some measurements now for you guys. So I'm going to do about two heaps tablespoons for you guys. Yeah, it's a supermarket brand. And this one here is also a supermarket brand, the psyllium husks. And this one swells. This one's actually um, ground. So you can see it's, it's just a lot finer than a, your normal one. So I'm also going to put two heaped spoons. That being the other spoon wasn't quite so far, it's probably a bit more. Right. And I'm going to put some turmeric. And we have about, yeah, one, one heap spoon. There we go. And I'm just going to get Harry to mix it. Hello here. Looking good. Here. Very cool. Oh, right. I'm going to pop it in here. Obviously, my quantities are a little bit different in this one because it's not quite the same colour, but um, it's, it's not a, the end of the world if you get. Some of these things not quite exactly the same. Um, this is just what works well for us. Obviously, you can make a, a bigger quantity, so it um, goes for a lot longer. So, so we're just going to use one teaspoon. these jars from the dump shop and they're quite good for putting your things your things that you make in. And this is aloe vera juice so this is not the sugared one because the sugared one is not good for you um, and it doesn't actually taste that wonderful but you get used to it. And you could still just drink it quickly. So what we do is we just put a quarter of a cup just under a quarter of a cup. And just give it a good mix. Like this. And then you drink it. Just like that. And then I normally just put a little bit more water in just to rinse the cup and then do it so that it gets, because a lot of it will stick to the sides. And then you leave it for half an hour um, after you've drank it before you eat a meal. 
So it's best to do it at breakfast time is the, the way that we do it. So get up in the morning, do some jobs, come and have your gut powder, then go do some more jobs, and then you're ready for breakfast. So um, yeah, it works quite well. So you could put a little bit of apple juice in here also because it would be also good for your gut, but it's just the sugar is the, the problem. Um, so yeah, this will just make you your, your gut nice and healthy. Hey, back to healthy remedies at home. We have some Epsom salts. So this is um, a great source of magnesium, but what many people don't know is that it's actually really good for burns. And so we're just gonna pretend that Harry is now had a burn, so he's hurt himself on the trampoline and got these poultices on, and now he's got a burnt hand, eh, Harry? You show us to burn? <laughs> so now, hopefully, this won't be too noisy. Let's pour some cold water in. I'm just going to use a good amount of Epsom salt. Now, when you've got a burn, it's generally a rush, like quick, put it under water. So while you're putting it under water, if someone was able to get some Epsom salts and put it in some water like this, and it will just be dissolving there and it will be soothing straight away. Obviously, burn's never nice. As soon as you take it out of the water, it hurts. But this is a really good way to help to heal the hand or whatever is burnt. So you would have to um, use a different size um, container for wherever you need to do it. My brother-in-law, hope he doesn't see this video, he spilled a cup of tea on his foot and it went into his shoe and he had quite a bad burn. So this sort of thing would be quite good if you had it in a little bucket and you could put your foot in as well. Um, it does, when it dries, it kind of goes sort of a white, sort of filmy thing. But um, So it is very drying. So once you've finished in here, um, you can keep coming back to it whenever you want to keep putting your burn back into the water. Feel free to just leave it out. But once you've finished putting your hand in, you might just want to wipe, uh, wash gently with water to get off the residue of the Epsom salts. How does that feel? Does it help you burn? Yeah. See you later.